Hello, I'm Cal Wellborn, agrologist with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services Division of Plant Industry in Gainesville, Florida. Hello, I'm going to talk about the family Pentheliidae. In the Prostigmata, there are a number of plant feeding families. Tetrachoidea, which has five families, all of which are obligate plant feeders. The Arifchoidea, with three families, they're also all obligate plant feeders. And as we move down the, the list of, of mites that feed on plants, we come to the Tarsonemidae. Only some of those are plant feeders. Most are fungivores or predators. And the Pentheliidae, it is a group in the Eupodoidea that has independently become Phytophagus. There are several families in the Eupodoidea, a couple of which we suspect to be Phytophagus or facultative Phytophagus, but the Pentheliidae are obligate uh, Phytophagus mites. The Eupodoidea consists of seven families, some of which are known only from one species, Dendrochetidae, known from South Africa, one species, we don't know what it does. Aerinchidae from Australia, it's believed to be Phytophagus. Eupodidae, which are mainly predators and fungivores. Pentholodidae, we think are Phytophagus, we don't know. Um, Pentapalpidae, one species from South Africa, we have no idea what it does. Uh, Ragidiidae, these are very aggressive predators in the soil. Stratmaniidae, known from just a few species, and these appear to be predators in the soil. And then we come to the Pentheliidae. We know they are Phytophagus. Of these, two of them have significant plant pests. The Halotideus, which is a pest of pastures in Australia, it was introduced many years ago from South Africa. Uh, Linopentheliis, Linopentheliotes, we have no idea what they do. Chromotideus, we know nothing about. But the Pentheliis is a, also is a Phytophagus species. It does occur in the U.S., some species do, but it's, it's found worldwide. The Pentheliidae, they have four pairs of prodorsal trichobothria, including one or two pairs of prodorsal trichobothria. Here's the prodorsum of, this is a Ragidiidae, but it's a typical uh, eupodoid, and Pentheliid falls in this group. We have a nazo with your anterior uh, prodorsal CD, which are the VIs, internal verticals. They are, may or may not be uh, trichobos. We have the SIs, the internal scapulars. If trichobos are going to be present on the prodorsum, the SIs are likely candidate. We have the external verticals and the external scapulars, which are normal CD. In the pentheliids, Leg one has at least one recumbent solanidia. And in this figure, we can see the recumbent solanidia on tarsus. Leg one, this is a tarsus, tibia, genu. And usually right adjacent to the solanidian is the famulus. It can be stellate shaped or it can be uh, variously shaped. Palps have four segments and are linear. The palp femur has four CD. Clicera has just one CETA on the, CETA on the clicerol base. In the genital region, there are up to three pairs of genital papillae, which are believed to function as water balance organs in the mite. In this view, we have the genital valves on either side and have a variable number of CD. We have the genital papillae inside here, and uh, there are also eugenital CD, which are found inside. The idiosomal ketome is moderately to strongly hypertrichous. Here's the nazo. Here's your VIs, VEs, SIs, and SEs. But if you notice look carefully, there's some other CD scattered around here. These are the hypertrichous CD, and they're scattered throughout the, the, opis the opisthosome of the mite, making it virtually impossible to determine the C, D, E, F rows because of the hypertrichy. Different species of pentheliids have different amounts of hypertrichous CD. Uh, this one doesn't have very many. Here's the immature. You can see the CD a little clearer. There aren't as many um, extra CD, 
But there's your uh, SIs, SEs, VIs. And this structure right here, along the side that goes up towards the nozzle, this is a podocephalic canal. It's not a paratreme. It's sometimes mistaken for a paratreme, but this is the podocephalic canal. You can see it on both sides of the prodorsum. In the pentheleids, the genus pentheleus, the antelope opening is dorsal, but in other pentheleids, it can be uh, dorsal terminal, it can be terminal or dorsal terminal. They are weakly sclerotized and unornamented mites. They usually make very poor slides, as example here. They're very hard to work with. Here on the right here, we have image of the anus. This is the dorsal anus of the pentheleid. And here's one that uh, happened to be uh, excreting at the time of the picture was taken. This is pentheleus dorsalis. It was described from the Washington, D.C. area back in the early 1900s. It had not been seen for many, many years. And just a couple of years ago, it showed up as a pest on bok choy and uh, some other winter-grown uh, crops. Very easy to identify. The body is very dark black to blue. Legs are red or orange. Uh, they can take a greenish tint in some of the immatures. The eggs are pearl white. And they were heavily infesting the, the plants, causing significant damage. Pentheleus. It favors grasses, but will feed on various plants. It is winter active. Most of the six nominant species in the genus are unrecognizable. They're poorly described, and the types don't exist, and you can't tell one species of another from the current descriptions. As I said before, Pentheleus dorsalis was recently rediscovered, and this is a colorized image of uh, Pentheleus dorsalis. You can see the anal opening in the live specimen. Sometimes there's a red ring around where the anus is. The legs, again, are red to orange, very brightly colored. Another species in the Pentheleus that's considered a pest is, is Pentheleus major. It's co considered to be worldwide. It's also called a winter grain mite. And it, again, is winter active. The females will deposit eggs, but as the, the females will deposit some eggs, but as the climate, as the female will deposit some eggs, but as it becomes warmer during the summer, the females die with the eggs inside the body. And then they hatch the following winter when, it, when the rains start and it cools off. They also have an interesting habit. They'll, they feed on plants, but when disturbed, they fold their legs and drop to the ground. So if you're looking, at, looking for these mites on plants, you're more likely to find them on the ground underneath plants rather than on the plants themselves because of this habit of dropping to the ground when disturbed. Here's a um, pentheleus. Here's your clistral base, here's your palp, here's your movable digit, and here's the fixed digit. In pentheleus, it's a trifurcate uh, at the tip. Halotideus, this is a pentheleid. This is similar to pentheleus, but the anus is posterior to ventral. Halotideus destructor is called the red-legged earth mite. It's native to South Africa, was imported accidentally to Australia many years ago, and has since spread across most of southern Australia and is a major pasture pest in the winter. There are four other species of Halotideus uh, from the South Africa and Australia, most of which are plant pests. Here in the U.S., we've discovered Halotideus twice in the last 15 years. Uh, once in 2000, once in 2012. Both, in all, both cases, they were in nurseries, usually associated with the potted plants. Uh, as far as we know, they are not established. Here's an image of uh, Halotideus. Here you see the uh, recumbent solenidia. There's, one, there's the base of one. There's the other. Can't really see the famulus, but it's right there. And here's the, the clistra, clistral base, the modified movable digit. And here's some more pictures of, of penthelo, pentheleus dorsalis. The dorsal anus is right here. 
Notice the red, orange legs and greenish to black body. And some more images, colorized image of the Pentheleus dorsalis. Again, here's another image of the eggs and the active mite. Questions? Do you have suggestions for processing pentaleids in order that they make better slides? Pentaleids make, generally make very poor slide mounted specimens. Another option for looking at pentaleids would be to use a cavity slide, but that can be very time consuming and uh, almost as difficult as looking at, at a slide mounted specimen. Are stomata always associated with paratrims? Simple answer is no. In many cases, some groups you'll have stigmata, but no visible paratremes. <laughs>